What's up everyone? It's your boy Norman Rad89 here, bringing you another video. And for today's video, we're going to be talking about The Batman, revisiting it. I know this film just recently came out, but it just dropped on HBO Max the other day. And a lot of people are catching it for the first time, and I've watched it three times now, twice in theaters, and once at home. So we're going to revisit it and talk about, does it still hold up, and how do I feel about this three-hour epic of a Batman film? So as I said, The Batman just dropped on HBO Max. Many people are checking it out for the first time now, and I'm one of those people who revisited it for multiple times, multiple times. I wanted to see it in theaters twice, and then I watched it this third time at home, and I think it still holds up. Even being that it's almost three hours, I think it just flies by. This is one of those films that has a really good pace to it. It has a lot of exposition and a lot of story stuff and a lot of twists, but it's paced and spaced out perfectly throughout the action and horror sequences that make it just flow perfectly and like I said being at three hours for me I don't feel the length at all it flies by especially for like a lot of other three hour event movies or stuff going on like there's other ones that feel way more lengthy than this film and I think this film still holds up I gave it a 9.5 out of 10 if you want to go check out my review I did that I also did a spoiler chat for it I think it still holds up for sure. Like I said, my all my gripes with it are just like minor nitpicky gripes. Like but nothing like major. So it's like nothing that I would change huge story-wise shit or nothing like that. So yeah, this is clearly easily one of the best comic book movies. And probably like if I was to say without taking my feelings into account and like what I really like. Like for me, this is my second favorite Batman film. But if I was to look at it like from an objective point of view... I think this is the best Batman film for sure, like easily. Like if everything that everybody wants is in this movie. It's got the dark noir stuff. It's got a detective Batman. It's got a gritty Batman, a Batman that people have been asking for for years. And like, it's just, it's perfect. Like I said, this is the Batman that many people have been asking for for decades. And that's not to knock Christopher Nolan's trilogy because Christopher Nolan's trilogy was really amazing. But it was a different flavor, a different style of Batman, a much more grounded, realistic Batman. Like when I watch those ones, I'm like, that's our world. That's Batman in our world. That's how I view it when I watch the Christopher Nolan ones. This one is like Gotham is characteristic. It has that kind of dark, nasty nature to it. And it feels like a character, almost like the Tim Burton versions of Gotham from back in the day. So that's what Matt Reeves was able to do was they brought in that groundedness to the story but the characterization and the characters in the film are much comic-esque and comic related and the way like I said the Gotham looks it has like a unique style to it and that's what I like like I said they took so many different inspirations and homages from other periods of Batman and also other films like Zodiac and The Crow and melded it and meshed it together and made the most unique and probably badass Batman movie that we've gotten to date. Like I said, this isn't my favorite one, but that's mainly because feelings and like I'm partial to a certain type of storyline and I really like Tom Hardy's Bane. So that's why Dark Knight Rises eclipses this one for me. And like I said, you can check out my ranking if you want to check out that video. I ranked all the Batman films and you can check out my thoughts more in depth on that. But The Batman is a very freaking strong film. One other major thing about this film is the score by Michael Giacchino. It's every, every time I listen to it, it's amazing. Like this is a score like you could listen to without this movie. Like you can go home, you can listen to the soundtrack or you can listen to it on vinyl and it kicks ass. Like this is like, oh, you can cook to it. You can clean to it. It's like good, powerful, emotional music, but it's got oomph to it. And like, that's what's amazing is it carries you through this film. And like I said, it really does add another element to it that takes it to the next level. Add to that, we have such an amazing cast around Robert Pattinson, the Batman who does a slam dunk job. All the people around him, Colin Farrell, Zoe Kravitz, Paul Dano, Jeffrey Wright, they all bring it and are all a class and like I said there's nothing really major i would change about this film and that's why it's clearly probably a 10 out of 10 like the only reason i got the 9.5 out of 10 for me is because there's little minor nitpicky things like batman taking a lot of damage in a five six days period span and we don't really see any kind of like healing time 
or you know all the repercussions of like you know a separated shoulder or like a dislocated kneecap or nothing like that there's nothing major like that going on and you would think some of the stuff that happens to him in this film there would have been some recuperation time even knowing the story and what happens in the twists and what happens in that third act it's still a potent film it's still a film that i like watching because it has such an ambiance and such a vibe for me, films, that's one of the major things that I love about movies is they have a certain feel. If a, if a writer, director, and actors, and everybody kind of tackles it in the right, correct way, the film should have an ambiance or a feel about it. And films, with the most criminal thing a film could do is be boring and be not stylish at all and just be tasteless. You know what I mean? Like, it's just bland. And this movie is not like that. This is flavorful. It's got spice. And this movie is, like, all over the place. And then, like I said, it's like a freaking fine, freaking $12 steak. Like, it's just amazing. Like, and it's got all the sides on it. And it's got all the fixings that you want with it. And that's what this film is. You know what I mean? It's not bland. It's not boring. And I love this film for sure. Like I said, easily my second favorite Batman film. But objectively, looking outside the box... I think this is the best Batman film, and the only reason I can see somebody arguing the other side, I'll say, like, let's play devil's advocate a bit, the only way I can see somebody arguing the other side is if this isn't your type of movie, and to be honest, if this isn't your type of movie, you probably aren't a Batman fan, or you might be a Batman fan from a different era. That's one thing I can see, is if you're a Batman fan that grew up with the camp and the Adam West and all that kind of stuff. This might not be your style of Batman. And when you come with that as your argument, I can understand that. That's totally a perspective that I could understand. But for somebody, if they come to this film and they're like, oh, well, the people that made this film, they, they hate Batman and it's got horrible writing and acting. Like, I'm going to I'm gonna look at you in the face and I'm going to tell you you're freaking crazy because all that shit's wrong. The only, like I said, the only way is like, if this isn't your style of film or this isn't the Batman that you typically enjoy. But a lot of people that I know and talk to over the years have been clamoring for this kind of Batman for decades. A dark, gritty one, much more mature one because Batman lends himself to a darker, much more mature tale. And DC and Warner Brothers really did this one right. And I'm excited to see what Matt Reeves and all of them have to offer us for the second film. Also, some other people they had, I remember online, a lot of stuff going on about the Joker scene. Some people had problems with Barry Keoghan's Joker, and I really didn't have a problem with it. Especially when you see the deleted scene that they leaked on YouTube, or not leaked, but that they released on YouTube. That deleted scene between Batman and Joker. I really wish that was in the movie <clears throat> and like because it would have made that scene at the end with Joker and Riddler just so much better like because you would have experienced that scene earlier with him like I said it's cool to have Joker as a side character like maybe he doesn't have to be a main character maybe he's just there to make Gotham a more three-dimensional lived-in world and maybe that's the purpose of Barry Keoghan's Joker like I said we don't really necessarily need him as a main villain or main screen time just having him there as the side character and having some other characters pop up too on the side that maybe won't be main characters in the future will show you that this Gotham is a much more three-dimensional lived-in world and there's effects and the stuff that Batman does and other villains do like I said has repercussions in Gotham City. Thanks for sticking around with me all for this video of this revi revisiting retrospective chat of, well, it's not retrospective, but it's revisiting the Batman because like I said, we had to. It just dropped on HBO Max, like I said, and it's a freaking amazing film. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend checking it out. Like I said, even if you aren't into superhero films, I think this film will touch a lot of people and really inspire hopefully a lot of creators to go into much more darker, mature routes with their comic content. Because a lot of us comic fans, we're growing up, man. We're getting older. And yes, there are younger comic fans, but the greater majority of us are older, and we are down for some much more mature content. So thanks for sticking around with me all. And don't forget to like and subscribe, especially if you're new to the channel. And have a safe and happy day. Peace out.